It's close to a decade since I graduated from Oxford and I can still remember my essays in my finals exams. I can remember the essays that I wrote about mythology and Shakespeare, I can remember long-winded essays about satiric court poetry of the Restoration era, and I don't have a good memory. Actually, naturally my memory sucks, it's one of the worst. You can ask anybody, they say you've got the worst memory. But the reason I can still remember these essays to this day with a bad memory is because I used a technique called the Memory Palace. And so what the Memory Palace is, it is an ancient technique that orators of, you know, the Roman and the Greek era, they used to, these great speakers, they used to use this technique, they, or you could call it the method of Loki, um, where basically you will imagine a place that you know very well, so it could be a palace, um, like they would use you know palaces and big palatial grounds and stuff like that or it could be your room it could be your uh, living room at home it could be your office it could be your study it could be your dorm room it could be your walking route to school basically whatever place or location or series of locations that you know intimately well you're going to use this and you're going to hang the facts of your essays the things that you're going to want to remember around this place so when you see people doing these great huge feats of memory like they'll memorize long strings of information they'll memorize pi they'll memorize um, even like the famous card deck trick where people memorize several decks of cards and they can tell you this cards come next and this and this and this they're typically using in combination with a few other techniques that we'll talk about they're typically using a memory palace this takes advantage of the fact that our brains are, are better equipped to remember uh, spatial or physical location so our spatial memory is better than memorization by other routes for example rote memorization just you know do you remember those long vocabulary lists you'd have in like French or German class you just drill them and drill them and drill them spatial memory is far far superior and I guess you could go back evolutionarily and you could see that was to do with you know us as hunter gatherers and being able to find food and shelter easily so it takes advantage of that one of my essays, actually one of my favourite ones, an essay that I got a first on, was about mythology in Shakespeare. And before going into the finals exams, I already knew what I was going to write about. I mean, you get different questions, but they're not worded so drastically differently that you have to come up with a new essay each and every time. So really, you can write a model essay, if we're talking about English literature, you can write a model essay for lots of potential themes and topics that could come up, and then you just sculpt it a little bit to fit the question. Um, and then so what you would do if you're using that approach is you already know what you're going to write. You already have an idea of logical progression of what your essay is going to look like. And so for me, I knew when the topic of mythology and Shakespeare came up, the first thing I was going to kick off with um, is a quote from Nietzsche, Friedrich Nietzsche. And I had a lot of different quotes. So how did I order it? How did I know firstly what the quote was and which one to pick first. So what I did for my for my memory palace, I chose my dorm room and I knew every nook and cranny of this dorm room. It was a small dorm room. Um, I knew my bed, there was a bedside table, there was a chest of drawers, uh, a cabinet, there was the desk, there was a little hall entrance where you could go to another room, my roommate's room, or you could go into the bathroom and then there's different things in the bathroom. And so what I did was I put different things that I was going to talk about in the essay in a logical progression as a little mini walking tour through my dorm room. So I knew I was going to kick off with a quote from Nietzsche, and the quote was, an overpowering feeling of unity that leads back to the heart of nature. Now luckily you don't have to memorise whole quotes verbatim in English literature or many other topics anyway, but you do need the key words. So the main words in that one that you want to remember are overpowering, um, feeling of unity and heart of nature or back to the heart of nature. So what I did was I knew when I start my essay, I'm going to start right at the top of my bed where I usually put my head and I thought, right, I'm going to put Nietzsche here, sitting on the bed. And a lot of people know what Nietzsche looks like. He's got that big moustache, he looks depressed, he looks grumpy. Um, and so what I did was I made it a very, very strong image of Nietzsche. And what you want to do when you do a memory palace, not only will you pick a place that you know really well, but when you populate it with the yeah, things you're going to talk about, make the imagery very, very strong. So I put Nietzsche at the top of my bed, visualized him very well, 
And um, I visualized him like trembling and shaking and rocking back and forth because he's got this overpowering feeling. And then what I did was I imagined him throw himself back and start rubbing the duvet and talking about, you know, oh, the unity man, the unity. It was like as if he had just taken some LSD and he was having a bit of a hippie trip. And, you know, there's him talking about unity and rubbing himself all over my duvet. And then he reaches under the duvet and he pulls out a a thing, and I'm like, when I look closer, I see it's grass, it's lots and lots of grass and mud, and the grass and mud is caked around a live, beating, throbbing heart. So that got me thinking, ah, oh, heart of nature. So we've got overpowering feeling, got unity, got heart of nature, got Nietzsche at the top of the bed, boom, got me kicking off my essay. So after I was done with Nietzsche, I needed to go on to a quote, after I've riffed on the Nietzsche thing, a quote by Sir James Fraser, who wrote a book called The Golden Bough. So what I did was I wanted to place Fraser next to Nietzsche, so I knew after Nietzsche I'd go on to Fraser, and that would be a springboard for my next point in the essay. So I put Fraser, or a miniature version of him, on my bedside table. Now, I think, unlike Nietzsche, I didn't really know what Fraser looked like, but I did have a school friend called Fraser, or his last name was Fraser. So I just imagined him, and I imagined him wielding a golden bough, because obviously that's the title of the book. Now, for this, um, I wanted to remember there's a chunk, uh, a big chunk uh, paragraph that obviously, you know, you're not, not going to remember all of it, but there were some key words in the paragraph that could help me go on with my argument. So obviously I can't remember the paragraph verbatim now, but I'll read it out and then I'll tell you how I remembered the key quotes from it. So he wrote, and um, I, I knew that if I remembered the key quotes from this or the quick key phrases, I could go into talking about magic in Shakespeare and I could talk about uh, Prospero from The Tempest. So James Fraser wrote, even the savage cannot fail to perceive how intimately his own life is bound up with the life of nature and how the same processes which freeze the stream and strip the earth of vegetation menace him with extinction. So the key phrases for me were savage, uh, freeze the stream and menace him with extinction. So what I did was I imagined um, Fraser looking like a savage. So he was all tattered clothes, caked in mud and shit. And then I imagined him using that golden bow to poke something on the bedside table. And if you look closer, it was a little frozen stream. And I'm trying to make the image more vivid. So I imagined a little fish caught under this frozen stream. And then all of a sudden, a lightning bolt comes down and narrowly misses him, almost menaces him with extinction. So Gone from Nietzsche, he's sitting on my bed, to Fraser on the bedside table. I, I'm already uh, two paragraphs in, if you count the introduction, and then I've riffed a little bit, and then what am I going on to next? And then I did that throughout the entirety of my essay, and not only did I do that um, for that one essay, but I did it for every essay. So like I remember one essay, uh, the memory palace, the place that I used was my tutor's office because we'd had have our weekly tutorials there for two, three hours. I knew that really well. So I used that as a location. I used lots of other different locations for different essays. Anyway, you get the picture. Um, what I would say as well is you want to make the, the imagery as vivid as possible. If it's violent, sexual, scatological, disgusting, funny, all the better. No one else has to know what your little story, what your image is, what your memory palace looks like. It's going to look like a mental ward, but that's good. So, and it takes a little bit of time to construct these stories, but it's time well spent because then you're not scrabbling around relying on memory, which doesn't use spatial memory, which isn't as good um, in order to come up with something on the spot. You can feel very secure that once you've memorized your little memory palace, once you've put things everywhere, you can go in anytime you want and take what you need and find what you need. It's really useful. And it's actually quite a fun way to revise as well. Sometimes revision can be really boring, but if you're just making up stories and just like, right, I'm gonna put this here and put this here, like you're playing Sims or something, that's really fun. And then when you get into the exam hall, it's going to feel like magic. At least it felt like magic for me.